Are Apple's updates in iPadOS 17 enough to make iPad a true Mac replacement? Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and as an avid iPad Pro user, I've been eagerly waiting for the time when iPadOS can truly replace the Mac, at least for most people. And with Apple's changes to Stage Manager as part of iPadOS 17, we are closer than ever. Let's take a look at these changes and see if it's enough to really ditch the Mac for Apple's powerful tablets. When Stage Manager arrived as part of iPadOS 16, it was rough, really rough. Stage Manager itself was like delayed, there was features missing, it didn't work with several different iPads, but over time, Apple has provided iterative improvements to the software feature that aims to make the iPad much more powerful by allowing you to more or less truly multitask opening multiple windows in one space and moving between them just like you would on the Mac, but it still wasn't there. iPadOS 17, which is set to launch this fall, is getting ready to change that. To start, windows can move much more freely. It's really easy to drag a window, move it around the space, it just feels more fluid and natural than it did in the past. We also have less restrictions on the sizes of windows. Windows before we used to kind of just get stuck in like an iPhone shape on the iPad, but now almost everything can move to any shape that you need it to. So make it really tall and skinny, make it small and square, make it most of the screen, whatever you need to do, you can move it around using Stage Manager and it works really nice. Sometimes it's still a little bit hard to grab like the corners and the grabbable corner switches, whether it's on the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen. Uh, so that's a little weird sometimes, but overall, Apple's done a really good job in improving Stage Manager so far with iPadOS 17. Another much welcomed addition to Stage Manager, aside from more free movements and resizing windows, is the ability to easily open new windows inside of a stage by shift clicking on an icon. So anything you have in the dock, hold down shift, click on it, and you'll immediately open another window inside of Stage Manager, just like you would on the Mac. It's doing a good job of bridging that gap between iPadOS and macOS. Honestly, this feature alone is a big enough change for me to use Stage Manager much more frequently than I did running iPadOS 16. That said, for all the good, there's still some bad. And there is time for Apple to clear some of these up by the time that iPadOS 17 actually ships. There's still weird things in iPadOS that just take over the full screen. It reminds me of like the volume interface on earlier versions of iOS, but if you go to something like the AirPlay chooser, when you pull that up, all of a sudden it takes over your entire screen, everything else is grayed out or blurred out, and you can't access it until you dismiss the little modal for AirPlay. Just kind of annoying. I wish I could kind of open that up, move something else, pop back, that modal is still there, could choose my AirPlay output, and it just didn't affect the rest of my workflow. It's just weird that it takes over the entire screen, preventing you from doing anything else. There's still a bit of a limit on how many stages and open things you can have on your iPad as well as on an external monitor. On your iPad, it seems fine. I mean, you can only open so many windows before the small display feels crowded. Apple puts this buffer around the edge of the screen as well, like a 20 pixel or something buffer. So you can't even go to the, all the way to the edge of the screen. So it feels like you're already closed in at least a little bit. So on the iPad screen, it's fine with how many windows and apps you can have open at the same time. But on external display, this shouldn't be the case. If you have a massive 32, 36 monitor, uh, you should be able to open as many apps as you want. I see no need to kind of limit it as much as they are doing unless it's just based around the M-series chip. But then again, we've seen how powerful the M-series chip can be actually running uh, Mac OS, so that shouldn't be the case. I mentioned those edge buffers on the iPad display. While I wish those would go away, I also wish you could move windows kind of outside the edge of the display. It's a weird thing, but I've noticed myself trying to do it and I can't. So like on your Mac, you maybe have a window, you're not bound by the actual display. You can move things off the edge of the display. So you can move like a window completely away, just leaving a little bit so you can grab it and pull it back. But you can't do that on iPad OS. You can just go right up to the edge of the screen and it, it just bumps up against it. Or if you move past it, it'll just pull it back right up there. I wish you could move off the screen, just give yourself a little bit of space and you can move things back on when you needed to. But I guess it's just all on how you're actually using the iPad's interface. Finally, I wish Apple had adopted some version of clamshell mode for iPad. On your Mac, if you're familiar, you can just close your Mac, slide it under like a trainer desk or put in like a 12 South book arc and use your external monitor with your laptop closed. I wanna do the same thing with my iPad. 
I want to sit at my desk, close it up, tuck it away somewhere, just plug in a cable, be able to use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. I want to be able to use uh, any storage that I plugged into the monitor as a hub basically, and just leave my iPad closed and not necessarily have to use it as a display and as a device. I just want to close it up, tuck it away, and still rely on that external monitor. Fortunately, that's not something you can do right now. I don't want to end this video by just saying a bunch of negatives. So there are a lot of positives still coming to iPad OS 17 beyond stage manager improvements that do make it much more powerful. For example, you can now use external microphones and webcams on iPad OS. This is huge. So if you plug in an external monitor like Apple Studio Display, I have here the Clarity Pro, which has a retractable monitor here at the top or camera at the top, you can open that up, access the camera and use that with your iPad. So if your iPad is down here, you want to look up here focus, you can see your screen, uh, your camera, all of that, it makes it much more natural. I love that you can use these upscaled webcams uh, better than what's built into the iPad. Apple is also adding interactive widgets to your home screen. So when you do go back to your home screen, you can interact with things, whether it is a weather widget, whether you're controlling home accessories, that's my preferred use of this. But I just love that you can interact with widgets now without having to open applications. And on the lock screen, Apple's added a ton of new widget options. You can completely customize your lock screens and there's live activities on the lock screen. So I love using this in conjunction with Stage Manager. So I'll be in Stage Manager, I'll go to the top, bring down all my notifications, my widgets that I have that are you know, live updating with information, uh, and then any live activities that are going on can sit there at the bottom. It's a really nice workflow, makes it much more uh, you know, powerful for pro users or power users. I like this, Apple is doing a lot. So to answer the question, is the iPad doing enough now to replace a Mac? And I think it's doing more now than it ever has before. It's moving beyond just your casual user checking email, browsing social media, and only people who are actually trying to get things done. We do have you know, Final Cut in some limited capacity on iPad. The new stage manager improvements really go a long way, making it feel more usable. And I feel comfortable using it now to actually get work done and moving between multiple windows in ways I didn't before. But Apple just still needs to integrate Stage Manager better into iPad OS. It kind of lives in its own thing, toggle it on and off from control center of all places. Like it just needs to be more integrated. And honestly, you still can't like, you know, tab between open spaces and stuff or stages. It still feels a little bit clunky, but it's like getting a lot closer. Can I, and I can actually see myself using it. But what do you guys think? Do you like the new improvements coming to iPad OS 17 and Stage Manager? Well, let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU or on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. I'd love to hear what you guys think as we approach the release. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have a lot more videos coming your way.